that was a background report on the commemoration of World Dev Day. It's actually a week celebration. It's a week celebration in the month of September, the last week in the month of se September every year. So I have here two guests with me that will be telling us more about this day, World Dev Day, the International World Dev Day, and they'll be telling us more about it. Who do I have here? I have Helen Beyoku Alafe. She is the Executive Director, Deaf Women Allowed Initiative, and also the National President, Deaf Women Association of Nigeria. And she has also here with me, Joseph Collins. And together, I'll be talking about this day. You're welcome to Good Morning, Amuja. You're also welcome. Good morning. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So, what's the significance of World Deaf Day, and why is it important to raise awareness about deaf community? Thank you very much for having us and for the important question. The month of September is... Um, the week last week of the month of September is internationally celebrated as the World Sign Language Week. Okay. And it is um, specifically picked to celebrate the achievement of deaf persons, oh. recognized by the United Nations to celebrate deaf people and to achieve uh, celebrate our achievements, mm -hmm. celebrate deaf culture and the identities of deaf persons, including their contributions to the society. Also, the important talks about, you know, in the deaf community, access to information mm. can only be achieved, you know, through communication in sign language. And access to information is also a human right. Mm. So to us, it is to, you know, promote our culture and to promote our identity as a deaf community. Um, the deaf persons, there are no special, you know, attributes to describe that a deaf person. But when you see me communicating with my hands, that shows that I'm a deaf person and we have our culture, we have our different um, things we celebrate and our values. So anywhere we see that uh, we have such celebration is a call to government and policymakers to ensure that sign language is used in government offices, hospitals, or anywhere where services are provided. For instance, in the US, when deaf persons, are, uh, we see interpreters everywhere and deaf people are freely you know, communicating. And everywhere you go, both on TV, and every person that you know accessibility through sign language. So that is just a thank you. Okay. Okay. So how has technology such as cochlear implants and communication apps improved the lives of deaf individuals? It's a good question. And um, honestly, we, we have learned that the society you know thinks about um, the cochlear in implants depends on. Um, bridges or cures deafness, but that is not true. No. People most times need to understand that sign language is just like every other language yeah. and it needs to be encouraged. The cochlear implant is just to amplify sound, mm. just for instance, for kids to learn how to like to know there is a horn or there is someone knocking, but that does not give a, 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 an understandable sound or something that we comprehend. There. It's just to amplify sound, like when there's a rainfall or when there's a honk of the car or something. That's just what the hearing aids or the cochlear implant, you know, does not necessarily to you know cure deafness. So we encourage and emphasize on the need to learn sign language. To, um, for instance. The way technology can has also helped us, like you mentioned, is the use of speech to text. For instance, I'm a deaf person and I cannot communicate with you and you can't communicate with me. You can speak into the app and the app will actually write out what you wanted want to communicate to me and I will read it. So that is how technology has helped us in such way. So it gives us the opportunity to and the need also to encourage deaf persons to go to school because without education, they cannot use these um, you know, devices. And sign language also helps us as a means of gaining knowledge, communicating, and all that. You can see with me here, we have a sign language interpreter to facilitate communication. Without him, it's quite difficult for this interview to you know, go on smoothly. So that is just how we are Thank you. Thank you. So what initiatives or events are happening on World Deaf Day to celebrate and support the deaf community? Thank you very much. In each community, they have their own unique ways of celebrating the International Week of Death. We have also in the federal government, uh, we are trying to call on the federal government to adopt sign language as the second uh, 
national mm-hmm. official language mm-hmm. of the mm-hmm. country mm-hmm. because we have deaf people everywhere and it's a right mm-hmm. to communicate mm-hmm. in their language it's sign language. Mm-hmm. Also, we also know mm-hmm. about mm-hmm. the importance of having the, the, the sign language to be taught in schools and to create, to create awareness and have advocacy on these areas. Also for us to advocate for having sign language interpreters in hospitals and where deaf people, when they go to access medical services, they can easily uh, get services in sign language without having barriers of communication. Also, when we have, for instance, the press briefings or uh, broadcasts from the president, or that there's a need for interpreters to actually be deaf people who are watching, you know, so these are a few challenges that we tend to raise you know, in weeks like this to call on the policy makers to see how they can you know, reach communication. For instance, when a deaf person goes to the police station and tries to make a report on issues and stuff without sign language or an interpreter, it's, it's, it's a huge challenge. So also in the religious organizations, churches or mosques, when you have God, that you are deaf doesn't mean you will not have to worship God. So with sign language, everybody is included and you're able to communicate effectively and just contribute your own quarter as a person, not just as a deaf person. Wow. Thank you. Like you've mentioned the challenges. I was going to say that, but you, you, you've done justice to that, so there's no need, but it's something we should actually work on, just as you pointed out, if these things, I think even for schools, for primary schools, especially secondary school, schools, so at that point, if we start, it won't be difficult for people to actually learn and understand the sign language because it's actually, as you said, it's one of the really um, the languages that actually should be um, introduced in schools so that from there we can actually grow. So how can individuals and organizations get involved or show support for the deaf community on this day, on like the, week, the celebration for this week now and then throughout the year? Thank you very much. I would like to draw back to what we spoke about the issue of school to create more um, spotlight on that. You know, in schools, for instance, at primary levels, governments try to introduce French language, Igbo language, Yoruba language. These are all languages which are in the same category, the same and priority with sign language. If, for instance, I go to school and I learn sign language in primary school or add sign language in the curriculum, people would have to go to school, whether you are deaf or not, just learn the language. That would actually make the world more accessible. For instance, myself, I have many children who, you know, who go to school and when government has to make it compulsory that they have to learn certain languages. So, we have to also make, even in higher institutions, too, communication will be easy when we have this this background of signing right from primary. Some basic sign language like, good morning, how are you? Just like, come here and just communicate. Sign language is beautiful. It makes the world beautiful. Uh, uh, sorry, I was, going to, uh, I was going to say, just say, good morning, how are you? Like that, I told her I was going to learn something, very simple one, before let's go to this. So I should learn one. Just tell me one before I let you go. Come on, come on. This is just good morning. I can just teach you good morning. So good. 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 Yes. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, it's not hard. Just like the rising of the sun. Oh. Good afternoon. The evening, the sunset going down. Then I left this one. He said thank you. So if you see a deaf person, they will just say hello. You see that expression would actually show that someone who is able to communicate in their own language okay. is trying to oh, wow. So that will help each organization have their own role to play okay. towards this inclusion. Oh, okay. Okay. Wow, thank you for coming on the program. Like I should just keep learning. It's a whole lot to learn, but I know one day we'll let you come again to actually give us Proper lessons. <laughs> Thank you for coming on. Good morning, yeah. Thank you We've so been speaking with Helen Bayoko Alasi, the Executive Director, Deaf Women Allowed Initiative, and also the National President, Deaf Women Association of Nigeria. And she has told us a whole lot the challenges and also what how they want to celebrate the day this year. In fact, it's a week of celebration. So she has told us how they intend to, um, to, to, to celebrate the week. That has been wonderful. Also, I had here Joseph Collins that was doing the interpretation for us to make it actually good for us to understand ourselves. So we'll go on the short break and after that the program continues.